Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mount Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then subscribe and click on that bell icon and you'll get notified when I come out with new videos. Now, have you ever had text fields that when you tap on them, the keyboard shows and then covers up the text fields? If so, then I think you'll find this video super helpful because you're gonna learn a very easy way in which to handle this. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Here's the problem we're trying to solve. We're adding a new activity on a smaller phone, say the iPhone SE. When we tap on the text field to supply a title for this activity, the keyboard shows. And then that keyboard covers up the text field. Well, what we wanna do at this point is scroll up the pop-up so the text field is visible above the keyboard. Now, iOS does not do this for you automatically. Oh no, you gotta take care of this yourself. So how can we do this? There are two ways, maybe even more, but there are two ways that I know of. The first solution is to embed the pop-up inside of a UI scroll view. Now at this point, the user cannot scroll this pop-up as it is right now because the content of that pop-up is smaller than the UI scroll view. So when the keyboard shows, what do we do? We want to adjust the content inset of the scroll view. Making the content inset smaller than the content itself will enable scrolling. Whenever content extends outside of this content inset and boundaries, then scrolling can happen. That sounds simple, right? Yeah, you'd hope it was simple, but there's a lot of steps involved to make this happen. Let's take a look. The first thing we have to do is we have to listen for two events. One, where the keyboard will show, and second, when the keyboard will hide. You wanna start listening to these events when the view controller shows. And then you wanna stop listening to these events when the view controller disappears. Okay, once we hear the event that the keyboard will show, we can then get the height of the keyboard. Then we use this height to adjust the scroll view's content inset. This will now allow scrolling. One other thing that I should mention too is that we have to handle the size of the scroll indicator using this property called scroll indicator insets. This is that dark line that appears when scrolling to let you know how far you have scrolled. You have to adjust the size of that scroll indicator using the keyboard height as well. Now when the keyboard hides, we want to reset the content inset. We basically reset the content inset back to its original value. We also have to set the scroll indicators back to their original size too. And then when the pop-up is actually dismissed, we stop listening to the keyboard events. Whew, okay, now that is solution number one. And this is pretty common practice when it comes to iOS development too. We've been doing this for years. There are third-party libraries that help make this easier as well. Now let's look at solution number two. The second scrolling solution involves using a UI table view controller. The pop-up would be contained inside of a static table view cell. And you might be asking yourself at this point, why would I do this? Well, this works because the table views and the table view controller has the UI scroll view built into it. And the table view controller already knows how to automatically scroll to a text field when the keyboard shows. And that's pretty much it. So uh, can you guys guess which scrolling solution we're gonna use? <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna use the UI table view controller for scrolling. Okay, now let's head into our project and we're gonna get this scroll view working through the UI table view controller. Okay, we're in our project for the itinerary app and this is where we're going to be doing our work. Let me run the application and show you what happens. Okay, we go to add an activity and it shows up just fine. And notice here that I'm running it on the iPhone SE. This is the smallest phone that still runs the current iOS. So when I tap on this text field, notice it gets covered up. So this is what we need to handle. We're going to have this pop-up scroll up automatically so the text fields come into view. Okay, let's make some room for ourselves here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up my object list and get a table view controller. And we'll just put this on the screen here. Okay, now I wanna put this pop-up in the table view controller. But first, there's a couple of properties I need to set. Okay, for the table view, I wanna change it to static cells. That just basically means we're not gonna be running any code to populate cells. These cells are static, they're not dynamic. We're not populating them with, from some data source. And by default, you know what it does is it gives you three cells. I only need one. So let me delete these other ones. Okay, that leaves me with one cell. I'm just gonna drag it down, give myself some room. And now I wanna copy over this pop-up view. 
So I'm going to select it from here and I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to select the content and I'm going to paste it right in there. There we go. Now we have our pop-up. Okay, now I want to set some constraints first. So let's select our pop-up view here. We'll come here, 30 down. And I think this was 16. There we go. And I'm going to uncheck the constraint to margins. The height constraint, I can see that it's already on there. So we don't need to add that. And that looks good. Okay, now at this point, we can just delete this view controller. Oh, uh, you know what I should have done? <laughs> I should have dragged over that is initial view controller. There we go. Okay, that should work. Okay, now this is going to be a pop-up. It's going to show like a pop-up. What I mean by that is we want this to show on top of another view controller. So the two view controllers are showing at the same time. So there's some properties I need to set on the view controller itself. So let's select this up here. And it's mainly these two properties right here. We want it first to cover the current context. And that will just put this view controller on top of the other one. And instead of a cross vertical, you know, animation transition style there, we want just the cross dissolve. And that's what we had on the other view controller. So now this will show more like a pop-up where it's actually on top of something else. Now remember, this is a table view. So there's some things that come with a table view that we might not necessarily need. And one of them is a separator. You know, like the rows have the thin gray line between them. Well, we don't really need that, right? So let's select our table view. And let's just go down the properties here. There's only going to be one section that we need. And the separator right here. Well, we don't need a separator. And we don't need to select the cell itself. So we'll say no selection. And that just basically prevents us from, you know, when you tap a cell and it turns gray by default, that just prevents that from happening. Now, this table view controller does not have a custom class, does not have a backing UI table view controller class. So what we're going to do, let's take a look at our project here. We're going to use this add activity view controller. We're just going to convert that into a UI table view controller. So I'm just going to come up here and we'll make this a UI table view controller. There we go. And of course, all of our outlets are now disconnected too. So we'll have to hook those back up as well. Okay, so let's go back into our storyboard and then we'll set that view controller there now that it's a UI table view controller. We'll make some extra room for ourselves. All right, there we go. Okay, so I should just be able to drag these onto the controls themselves. And see, we have the picker view and the title text field. That's this one right here. Subtitle. Okay, and the activity buttons. Now, if you remember, this is an array of buttons. So we're gonna add all five of these buttons to this collection right here. All right, good. So those outlets are hooked up. Now let's take a look at our actions and hook those up. This action happens for all five of those activity type buttons. So we'll hook all those up. Okay, this looks like the save function here. And then we have the cancel button. Okay, I think that covers it. Let's test it and see what we get. All right, looks good, except we can't see behind it. So it looks like the table view has a uh, white background, so we'll have to fix that. Okay, I have the table view selected. Let's go into properties here. There we are, the white background. Let's change that to clear. And let's see how that works. Okay, it's better. Now the table view is clear, but it looks like the cell, the static cell, we need to make that clear as well. And there's also, there's something else that we need to do too. Let's cancel this and close it. What we need is, you notice how this darkens? So really what we should do is we should take this table view and let me just stop this real quick. And instead of a clear color, we should actually make it 40% black. So let's change that. Let's go to custom here. And let's see, it's on black. Okay, that's good. And we're going to change it to 40%. All right. That should do it. And our cell also had a color too, right? So let's select our cell. And you know, I always forget. I don't know if it's the 
the cell itself or the content view that I have to change. So let's just try the cell first. We'll change that to clear. And then let's run it and see how it goes. I think that's going to work because you see here, now you see that 40% black behind it. So I think that'll work. Yeah, that looks much better. So it looks like it's back at the stage that we had it at before. But the real thing we're testing here is to make sure that when the keyboard comes up, that it scrolls the pop-up too. So we need to test that. Ah, uh, there we go. Works perfectly. And now, you notice I didn't have to write any code. I didn't have to write any observers. I didn't have to respond to those events of the keyboard coming up, getting the height of the keyboard, adjusting the scroll views content inset, and then adjusting the scroll view indicators inset as well. I didn't have to do any of that. This all comes automatically. And notice that, you know, I can still scroll up and down if I need to change something up here while the keyboard is still showing. So everything's working great. That's exactly what we want. Let's cancel this. Now there's one more thing that I have some attention on, and I don't think we coded this, is when the keyboard comes up and I click done, the keyboard should go away. So let's, uh, see, I have to come down, down here and cancel it. And I think we did code this on the add day. So if I hit done here, yeah, see the keyboard goes away when I hit done. Okay, that's exactly what we want. And I think maybe when we created this add activity pop-up, we just forgot to do that. Okay, so let's do that. And I think what I'll do is I'll just go into that add day since it has it in there. And we'll just grab that code. Yeah, here it is right here. And we'll just add it at the bottom. Okay, now we just want to connect this action outlet to the text fields. Now, you saw me just drag it up there and drop it on the text field. But I don't think I can actually do that because I think it defaults the action to the wrong action. Yet, yeah, it defaults it to editing did end. And that's not the one I want. What I want is this primary action triggered instead. So I'm going to grab the primary action triggered and just connect it to this function instead. So I'm basically just kind of going about it the other way. I'll do the same thing here. Primary action. And just, you know, drag it somewhere in this function so it highlights. And then you can just drop it and it hooks it up. Okay, that looks good. Now let's test it. Okay, we have the done button. We click on that and it goes away. And it looks like the scrolling goes up. I don't know why the scrolling goes up. There might be some weird behavior here. So let's try this done button, that works too. Now see, that behavior seemed fine that time. Okay, everything's working great, and this is exactly what we want. Okay, that's it for this video. If you followed along, good job on adding that scrolling to your pop-up with the use of the UI Table View controller. Now, of course, you have an option here. You can use solution number one if you want to. That way is still valid and preferred by some developers, so it is up to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it on social media. There's a share button down there below the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And if you want to help out my channel, then what you can do is add a translation to the title in the description of this video in your own native language. And that way, people who speak your language or live in your country can more easily find this video. All right, thanks, guys. And keep climbing that big mountain to be a great developer.